Hi, welcome back to the part three of the chapter two. Uh, we're going to talk about learning objective um, five to six. So um, actually, this part of the lecture is a little bit more complex because it combined with the first two portion of the lecture. But it's also the good news is that due to its summarization purpose, hence that you can review and uh, understand it deeper about what happened to the prior uh, objective. Um, so let's uh, keep, um, keep going. So the learning objective five is trying to learn how to post in the journal entries to uh, something called a general ledger. General ledger, it sounds cool. Like what is general ledger? General ledger, ledger just meant account, like uh, something kind of uh, summarized. So general ledger, it means every account, it has its own summarization form. It's, that's it aggregation of each account by itself. So if you have a cash account, which is uh, have a 10 transaction going back and forth in a cash account, general ledger is going to be the one to show you only thing about the cash, only thing related to that cash account that happened during that period. It's an aggregation process, right, for each account. So, um, okay. so general ledger account, okay, is aggregation to a single balance. So it's a, it's a, a su it's summarization of a different uh, sentence together and or the journals into single account. That account, for example, is cash account or account receivable account. And during this process, we want to using posting, we call it posting, meaning that you, you look at the journal entries and you post in those debit side or credit side impact into the general ledger account, right? So posting is the process of transferring the debit or credit information from, from journal entries to individual general ledger accounts. And the general ledger provides in a single collection each account with its individual transaction and resulting account balance, okay? So let's, let's look at this. This is an example of a general ledger, and it has the date, right, format of it, and it has it's a description of what happened to that specific account on what day, okay? And it's have a debit impact or credit impact, and what's the balance changing in terms of that account, okay? So let's still using that same example of 25,000 issuing stock. We know that cash is increasing because you issue $25,000 and you get $25,000 from the investors. And you increase your common stocks for $25,000 because cash is asset account when it's increasing with debit. And stock common stock is a uh, owner's equity account, hence that we credit it, okay? And then how do we post in this to the cash account? As you can see, cash account, the beginning is this is general ledger of a cash account. The beginning December 1st, there's a zero in the balance. The same thing as common stockholder general, general ledger. In the beginning, there's a zero dollar, right? Hence, the, the first thing happened in this uh, company is on December 1st, they issue common stock for cash. So we put 2,000, 25,000 the, from the debit side, posting it in the debit side of cash. And we're posting the credit side of 25,000 increasing of a common stockholder into the credit side column of common stock, right? We call this red process, posting process. At the same time, the balance of the account changed as well. Okay, so let's see. Mm. So this one is another example. First, we know Eager borrowed the cash from the bank for $10,000, right? So borrow money from the bank, it means that two things happen. First is you got the cash. Second is you incur notes payable, you incur liability. Hence the cash increase for $10,000 and we record on the debit side. And you incur notes payable, which is liability, then we, we uh, credit it because uh, liability is LOR, right? Increase in credit, uh, liability with credit. Hence, the in terms of see the cash journal transaction, journal transaction is gonna post into the cash general ledger. It's a continuous process in terms of cash, right? It did not 
say okay start a new it's a, it's a, right after the issue common stock there's a, another transaction happen to cash is borrow cash by signing a note hence you put the ten thousand dollar here right debit side post on the debit side and uh, you put ten thousand dollar credit and you start a new general ledger titled as note payable right and the beginning balance is zero and uh, you credit you put the credit side here right and then you edit it up you find the new balance of cash is thirty five thousand and a new balance of uh, note payable is ten thousand so posting journal entry also can posting a uh, journal entry to the journal ledger. We can simplify it. We call the T account. The T account is basically look. It's basically uh, simply just this portion of this form, right? It's just cash on the top and the debit column and credit column. And then we're also omitting the debit and credit. We always remember each T account. The left hand side is debit and right hand side is credit. Okay. So let's see this, this uh, example. So on December 1st, Eagle purchased equipment with cash for 24,000. So we purchase equipment means that we increase in equipment and uh, we, our money fly out of our door, hence that we decrease in cash. So when we have increasing asset, we debit it. When we have a decreasing in asset, we credit, okay? So using this simplified version of journal entry, we call it a T account. Doesn't it look like a T, right? T account. And the left hand side is always debit side and uh, right hand side is credit. So include the account title on the top, left side recording the debits and right hand side recording the credits. So for this example, the debit side of the equipment, 24,000 gonna put in here, right? And the right hand side, the credit gonna put on the cash, reduce the cash gonna put on the credit side. So it's posting on the credit side. So this gonna be look like the, the posting of the third journal entry, right? We'll always remember put the uh, number of the uh, transactions in the bracket in the T account as well. So simplify the version of journal entry account including account's title at the top and the left is debit and right side is credit and we simplify, we don't even write, write on it, okay? If you have a hard time at the beginning, you can put debit and credit, that way when you're posting, you don't put on the wrong side. But as long as you know how to write a journal entry, posting is just so simple. If you see this account and I get a debit side, you just put that account inside of the left hand side. If you see this account has a credit uh, uh, impact, then you just put on the right hand side of that account. Okay, so posting transaction to account four out of 10. So on December 1st, Eagle pays one year rent in advance for $6,000, right? So it's a $500 per month, so for 12 months, it's a $6,000. And we explained that this rent is gonna be useful in the future period hence that although it sounds like rent sounds like expense but it's actually rent uh, rents that we haven't enjoyed yet the space we haven't used hence so we've treated it as a uh, what assets so in this example we debit prepaid rent which in essence is asset and then we credit the cash because we our cash reduced hence we reduce use a credit side and then when we're posting it exactly, we put the debit side to the prepaid rent T account on the left hand side. We put the credit of the cash on the right hand side of the cash T account. Okay, on the fifth transaction, on December 6th, Eagle purchased supplies on account. So we talk about on account in the first uh, uh, lecture that on account means that we haven't paid that person, but we already got the supply, right? So in, in other words, that we have an increase in supply, we have an increase in liability, short-term liability. Hence the supply increases, we're gonna, it's a supply is an asset account, we will debit it. And when there's an increase in, in a liability account, which is increased liability, we will credit it, right? Uh, liability is L-O-R, that right-hand side. 
Okay. So increasing the in, uh, supplies we post in it, we just post on the left hand side the supplies. Credit accounts payable because it's credit, we just put on the right hand side of the accounts payable account. Okay. Okay. So number six is talk about Eagle provides soccer training to customer for cash. So providing some uh, service for, ca for cash means that you are making money. You're doing the providing uh, the main purpose of your, uh, your, your firm is trying to train people and you are providing services. Hence that in this transaction we talk about we increase, uh, we have a revenue increase and also the second account impact is we have a cash increase, right? And in, when we talk about the cash increase and the revenue increase, remember cash increase means asset increase. In the de dealer uh, simplified uh, remembering model is that DEA. So when we increase in cash, we're gonna debit it. When we increase in revenue, we're gonna credit it, right? So just simple like that. Just remember DEA increasing that, uh, increasing on the debit side and the LOR account uh, increase on the credit side. So since this transaction impacting two accounts, both of them are increasing. So I will debit cash for 4,300. I will credit service revenue for 4,300. And when we're posting it, we just remember debit always on that account left hand side and the credit always on that account right hand side. See, okay. So when we're calculating each account balance, so remember cash is a debit side account, meaning it always have a debit side balance because it's on the left hand side of the, uh, the equation. And the revenue is a, a credit side, a right hand side equation because remember the expanded accounting formula, revenue is part of return earning, is on the right hand side. Hence revenue, okay, is always have a credit side balance. So how did I get the, the, the balance of 9,300 is because I add up all the debit side and minus the credit side for cash account, okay? And the revenue, why it's a positive 4,300? Because the revenue is actually a credit side balance account. Hence, when you're calculating a credit side, which is liability and owner's equity account, you use the right-hand side to minus the left-hand side. Okay, don't worry, we're gonna get there, okay? So December 17th, Eager provides soccer training again to the customer on account. So this kind of on account, instead of like we owe other people, this is, means people owe us money. We provide service to the customer and the customer hasn't paid us. Hence, there's a two account being impacted. One is account receivable account and another one is service revenue accounts, right? And both of them are $2,000. So when we have accounts receivable increase, we said it's an asset account increasing, we debit it. And when we have a service revenue account increase, we say it's LOR, it's credit, we credit it. And when we're posting, we post the uh, debit on the, the left hand side of the uh, accounts receivable, and we post the credit of revenue on the right hand side of revenue. And hence we have such balance. So on December 23rd, Eagle received cash in advance for 12 soccer training sections to be given in the future of $600. So this is very interesting that we already received cash, however, we have not providing the training session yet because you see, to be given in the future. That means we haven't fulfilled the requirement of our revenue recognition principle that we talk about in chapter one. Hence, we owe the customer, the services. We treated this uh, soccer uh, training session, the, the action that we owe as a deferred revenue. The essence is a liability, right? Hence, when we increase in cash, we debit it, but when we increase in liability, in this case, the name of it is deferred revenue, we, what? we credit it. And then we religiously posting the debit side on the left hand side of a cash T account and the credit on the right hand side of T account. Okay, so posting transaction to the account nine out of 10. This one is that I wanted to emphasize you, it's, it's an expense account, how do we are posting it? How do we uh, think about it? So Eagle pays a salary to the employee for 2,800. Obviously, the Eagle will reduce their cash 
balance for 2800 because the cash goes out to the employee, right? And the employee's salary is the expense account. Do you remember? Expense account is a debit balance account because it's on the left hand side, right? So that's when that's that's right. This is the reason why there is expense happening with debit expense and the, and the cash decrease with credit the cash. Okay, so uh, when we're posting it, we post the 2800 on the left hand side and the 2800 on the right hand side for cash T account. Okay, uh, okay, so December 28th. Uh, Eagle pays cash dividend to shareholder for $2,200. So remember, dividend increase, it means reduce the return earning, which means that it's on the left hand side, which is debit side account. Hence, we debit $200. And then we reduce cash for $2,200 here. Okay? So, okay. So, illustration of all these things added together, let's look at the storyline of the soccer economy uh, during the December uh, uh, 2020 is that. So for on, de on December 1st, uh, the soccer econ econ uh, academy issued a common stock, right? And then it's increasing cash by debiting cash, uh, cash and the credit common stock. Okay, common stock is the credit account. And, uh, um, and uh, on December 1st, it also gather money from, borrow money from bank, hence that in it's uh, incurring note payable, which is liability account, and also recipient of cash for 10,000. Hence we debit cash and we credit liability increase. And then same day, the academy go buy equipment and using cash, hence we debit the equipment as asset increase and we, we credit uh, cash for 24,000 because cash decreased. Okay? And then when we, we find out December 1st that the, uh, the academy actually prepaid the rent for $6,000 for next whole year and we treated this prepaid rent as asset. Hence, when asset increase, we debit $6,000, and at the same time, we, our cash decreased, we credit the cash decrease. On December 6th, the Academy purchased supplies on account, right? It's, uh, that means that they go buy uh, supplies, but they didn't pay the vendor yet. Hence, we have increasing in asset by debiting $2,300 and we increase in liability by credit liability for 2300 And uh, uh, December 12th, uh, Academy provided training to customer for cash means that we increasing our cash balance for 4300 At the same time, we earned 4300 money by providing the services. And the revenue is a credit side account means that when it's increasing, we credit the 4300 on December 17th, that we're providing training to the customer who haven't paid us yet. Hence, that we have an account receivable, which is the asset account increasing with debit for $2,000. And then we have a revenue increasing as well, and then that's why we credit the $2,000. Okay? On December 23rd, we actually receive in advance from a customer that we haven't provided the training yet. That means that we the receive the cash is going to be increasing, hence we, we debit the $600. But because we haven't performed our duty yet, that's why we're increasing our liability for $600. Okay, so we credit it. And uh, when we pay the sa uh, salaries to the employee at almost at the end of the December, we remember that expense account increasing is considered as a debit balance account. It's 2800 with debit, and the cash is 2800 because we have a cash decrease. And December 30th, that we pay the dividend to the, um, to the shareholders. And dividend, remember, is DEA account is on debit account. Hence, so we debit $200. And we, when we pay cash to uh, cash payout, and we credit cash. Okay, so this is uh, all the accounts, the T accounts put together, right? 
if your SSI account your T account here or here right everyone has its balance and this is all the liability T accounts put together this is what it look like and all the stock equity holder account put together this is the external transaction of Eagle Academy from journal interest to general ledger accounts okay okay so let's do a concept check which of the following is it used to provide a chronological record of all the transactions affecting the firm. Of course, the journal, right? The journal is a chronological uh, record of the economic event that have taken place. The, gen the general ledger, which is a uh, choice A, is used to accumulate the balances of the accounts. And the trial balance is a summarization listing of all the debit and credit accounts for specific date, okay? The income statement is a financial statement used to determine whether the business was profitable. Okay, we're gonna talk about this in next learning objective. And the general ledger we talk about is summarization or aggregation of the transaction happened to a specific account during a period of time. And trial balance is put all the account during a period of time together and then put them to see whether the, the debit side and the credit side are balanced, okay? And the income statement is a communication tool just to, to show it's a, you need to publish it in the Edgar, which is SEC website, to tell the, all the investors that who give you money as an equity holder whether you are making money. Okay, prepare trial balance. A trial balance is a list of all accounts and trial balances at a particular date. Okay, so trial balance only, you can choose a period of time to, con uh, to, to do this exercise, but it uh, shows you at a particular date, all the list of account that has, uh, has uh, economic transaction impact on their balance look like, showing whether the debit side equals the credit side. Another purpose of trial balance is to assist us in, you, in preparing adjusting entry for internal uses, and so we want to look at on the chapter three, because uh, when we look at it, sometimes it doesn't balance the left hand side, although you did everything right. But remember, this chapter we talk about external transactions. Next week, uh, next uh, chapter we're going to talk about um, uh, internal purpose. Hence, that the trial balance is essential to help us to balance debit side and the credit side. Okay. And then uh, this you will never show anybody because it's just a periodical exercise for yourself to make sure you, you balance the book. And it's not published to any uh, external users. Okay, and it's not required to follow order of listings. Okay, so based on the uh, academy's uh, 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 economic events in during December, uh, so this is gonna be the trial balance of the uh, Eagle Soccer Academy. So the debit side, we have so many transactions happened, right? Uh, happened to the cash side, accounts receivable side, and uh, and uh, so this is the account balance of each account, right? During that period of time. So remember, the cash has a multiple transaction impact. Let's look at it. So. It has a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight transaction impacting on the cash account get a nine ninety-six hundred dollars balances on the debit side balance, right? And then and the account receivable has a like one transaction and it's resulting in the debit side balance. And the uh, uh, the suppliers have resulted in the twenty three hundred on the debit side. Uh, the next the most big impact uh, probably is the revenue account, right? Which is on the credit side has two transactions, right? So all this result, resulting balance will be put into the trial balance form that we saw a moment ago. Hence, that you see here, so, uh, ninety six hundred is coming from that T account, right? And remember the the service revenue, the six thousand three hundred is coming from that T account. Okay. All we wanted to do is to make sure the debit side of this specific date or during this specific time or this or during on this specific date the whether the cash ending or the, the uh, asset accounts add up together 
and the liability account as together or return earning account as together on the debit side equals the credit side please remember everything must equal the debit side must equals the credit side in a trial balance okay okay so it's i just uh, briefly uh kind of um, showed you in this chapter and we will have a lot of exercise during the class and at the same time uh, you have to remember first of all you need to understand the essence of the business meaning that always ask yourself which account is in impacted okay what is the second account impacted and the third question is is it increasing or decreasing okay and the third question is whether the increase and decreasing are equal once you understand the impact essence of the, the transaction, whether increasing which count or decreasing which count, okay, then you can see, oh, is this the count, the DEA account, which means when it's increasing, I should debit it, and then and, or when it's decreasing, I need credit. And you can put the increasing and the account essence together and decide whether you want debit that account or credit that account, okay? After that, we, we talk about we want to post in that journal entries into a T account of a specific individual account to make sure we always see the ending balance, right? So the T account or the general ledger. And after a period of time, on a specific day, you want to say, eh, let me look at whether my book is balanced. And we're using trial balances to look at whether all the debit side of the accounts equals all the debt credit side of all the accounts add together it, mo it has to equal to each other okay so welcome again and uh, uh, accounting is language of business and we will get there we are now learn the basic grammar of the language okay and i'll see you uh, next chapter